Alright guys, welcome once again. This is Lucas Clones here and I'm here uh, once again with another Aves tutorial. Uh, this one is going to be on Aves Clay Shea. Clay Shea is basically um, a material that you can use. You mix it uh, and it uh, acts like clay. You can kind of sculpt with it a little bit. Um, and then it sets up like paper mache like very very hard and you can also it says on here you can even carve it after setup time has passed uh, obviously sanding it so forth and so on so it's kind of like part paper mache part clay that's why it's called clay shape this is the five pound uh, container it's pretty big you can see if I pan back here how big it is in relation to my collection and whatnot back there and there's a little to open it there's a little thing here on the top and you can see it's in a bag um, if you've ever worked with ready-made paper mache materials that this is pretty much standard you're probably going to want to go outside with this that's what I'm going to be doing to work with this today um, because when you pour this into the bin it's going to create dust and particles in the air that you don't want to breathe in um, probably even one of those little filtered masks type things that you can get really cheaply. You're probably going to want to wear that. I'm just going to try to be really careful. Um, back on the directions for use, it says you measure the dry mache powder as needed, mixed with water to desired consistency. So they don't even tell you like a, a ratio that you could just mix it however you want. If you want it to be watery, make it watery. If you want it to be thick so you can sculpt with it, you can make it thick, which is really cool if you think about it. The setup time is about an hour. So after about an hour, it's going to be pretty much set in place. You're not going to be able to move it around or sculpt it or whatever. So you're going to want to work kind of fast. And then depending on the consistency you can carve it if it's if it's really really thin you're probably not going to be able to carve it too well I'm imagining but if you make it thick you'll be able to carve into it so it just depends on what you want what I want today from this is I'm going to be using um, this piece of wood here to make a, a just a, a little textured ground for my figures to stand on and that I might be able to apply uh, you know, grasses, uh, rocks, whatever, just so that it looks like a sort of like a an outside area. And this is basically I, I like to use a lot of just found objects to make dioramas with because they're free. That's and this is a, it was a Moncala game that my kids had. It was a travel one, and they lost all the pieces to it, so it was bound for the garbage can. But it's a nice piece of wood here, nice finish on it. So I'm gonna flip it over and. I'm going to put the clay shea on here and um, make a little uh, sort of like a little textured ground uh, I'm thinking of placing a few figure stands on here first I'll do that with the hot glue before I put the clay shea on and embed the figure stands into the clay shea um, kind of a lot like I did with this piece here um, you could see the figure stands. I like to use the Rise of Cobra figure stands because uh, they don't say G.I. Joe or Cobra on them. They just kind of look like ground, like maybe metal grates or whatever, but they have the pegs on them, so, and they look great when they're dry brushed. So what I'm going for will be a textured ground, a little bit smoother than what you see here. This, this is made with sand and kitty litter mixture. Um, which turns out great, but uh, I want to see what the clay shake can do. So, um, stand by for the next part. Alright guys, this is the next level of the video, next stage of the video. I've got about a cup, I used just some regular old measuring cup of the clay shake in a mixing bowl. Um, and for your own safety, ask your wife before you use her uh, cooking materials because she might not be too happy if she sees what you're doing with them. And I just got a jug of water right here, so I'm just going to pour. I'm going to do this a little bit at a time because I don't want to put in too much water and make it all watery. I want this to kind of be thick consistency, so I'm going to pour that in there. And we're going to mix, mix. This is the fun part. All right, so it's a little watery. So I'm going to add a little bit more clay shea 
I'm going to have to stop the video for a moment so that I can have my hand back. Alright guys, I'm back and um, I pretty much got the, the dio uh, arranged the way that I want it here now. I wound up with a mixture of about two parts to one, that being two parts of clay shea to one part of water. So basically my mixture turned out to be about two cups of clay shea and one cup of water and you can see out of my five pound bag it looks like I've barely touched it and I've got enough here to actually do the other half of my diorama which I'm going to um, do after I turn the camera off in just a few seconds here because I ended up with way more clay and I had a feeling this was going to happen um, uh, than I intended to, to make so and rather than letting all that go to waste I'm going to uh, go ahead and put this but if you look at what I've done here this stuff is fantastic to work with I'm really really liking it um, I didn't uh, hot glue the, the stands onto the wood uh, I kind of got into a hurry a little bit ahead of myself but I have a feeling that this clay shade is going to be super super strong so I've just kind of embedded them into the material itself and um, it says it takes about one to two days to completely dry out so I'll do another quick video in about one to two days I'm gonna put it out in the Florida Sun um, and and see if that speeds up the process uh, because we have it's summer right now and it we have uh, blazing hot days it's almost August so um, the Sun as long as it doesn't rain outside will be beaming down on this thing all day long it's still morning time now so we'll see how fast it dries out uh, but you can see the texture that I've laid down here I want this to be an arctic dio so I want it to look like packed snow ice and I've kind of given it a little bit of, of texture through in these areas here where it looks like maybe the wind has whipped the ice around a little bit and then when all is said and done I'm gonna prime this thing uh, gray with some spray paint uh, which I have and indoor outdoor spray paint just the cheapo stuff from Walmart and then I'll be able to dry brush on some white uh, acrylic on top of the gray to give it a little bit of depth um, and that's going to do it for this part of the video. I'm going to clean up the edges here a little bit, maybe add just a little bit more texture, and then, uh, like I said, I'm going to work on the other half of this diorama. Uh, I have a whole other wooden piece just like this, and then I will be back with an update once this stuff sets in a day or two, uh, so you guys can see how it turned out, and then, of course, painting it, so forth and so on. Alright guys, welcome back again. This is Lucas Clones and this is day two of our Aves Clay Shea tutorial. Uh, you can get Aves Clay Shea at avestudio.com once again and so basically these things have now had about 24 hours to dry out and it says it can take anywhere from one to two days on the directions but since I've had such a um, thin layer of the clay shea some areas are thicker than others but since it's so thin it has now uh, pretty much dried completely it's it's dry as a bone the way you would know if it was still wet is if it was cool to the touch um, and this fills room temperature or actually outside temperature since it's outside so as you can see it's it's really strong I mean I can take my fingernail and I can you know kind of chip it off but I have to really apply some pressure so it's very very sturdy um, and it looks it looks fantastic let me get a close-up you can see all the texture you can see there's like all sorts of little bubbles and um, you know dips and dives and all kinds of stuff I did not hot glue these um, stands down I had originally planned to but I didn't do that and you can see they are not moving they are cemented in place and that's what this stuff reminds me a lot of it's a lot like cement um, you know if you've ever used paper mache anything before you know that it's very strong so this stuff looks great I'm gonna clean up the edges with some sandpaper and then I am going to see how the Aves cliche takes paint all right stay tuned all right guys um, so I sanded the sides like I said and I 
laid down a um, couple of coats of gray primer spray paint so the next thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna hit it with a little bit of this flat sealer this Valfar Valspar sealer flat is kinda cool because it adds a little bit of extra texture to it which will be great for our ice texture so uh, I'm gonna spray that down let that dry and then I'm gonna hit it with some dry brush white acrylic paint uh, to give it that touch and I may add a few dead uh, dead looking uh, bushes or, or moss type things uh, on the ground and finish it up so the next video you should see the finished product alrighty thanks for watching again stay tuned bye alright guys uh, welcome back back in the studio here for the last segment of this video I have um, taken the pieces uh, of diorama that I created using the clay shea and I have now, they were primed in gray, which you can see still here on the figure stands. And I have painted them basically just by kind of loading up a, a, a bristle brush. This is the one that I used right here. And just kind of brushing it on lightly so you get some highs and lows, you know, in the color, the brighter whites, and then some still some gray here so it has some depth sort of like dry brushing but with a little bit more and I, I brought out an older diorama that I made to kind of compare and contrast the clay shade with other materials that you can use so if you look here this is a arctic dio stand that I made um, and I actually used my mixture uh, that I created of Elmer's glue it's basically Elmer's glue water sand and a little bit of kitty litter and you can see that it's a lot more um, kind of rocky rough surface um, I think I use actually didn't use any kitty litter in this now that I'm looking at it yeah I think this is just pure sand and then the clay shea as you can see it just has more of an of that crusty looking ice texture to it this still looks kind of gravelly and rocky it works but the clay shea I think pulls off the, the whole ice um, look much better than than um, uh, the sand and, and glue water mixture um, so that's that and I also did do a small little uh, dio stand also with the clay shea for one of my GI Joes that I've been working on today um, so that's gonna do it for this tutorial the only thing that I might add to this uh, diorama is like I said in the last segment I have some moss here I haven't done it yet because I wanted you just to see what it looks like but this is sort of like a grayish greenish moss and I might just put some strategic little bits see so maybe there's some vegetation showing through the ice or or what have you and um, there you have it hot glue that on and um, that's gonna do it so one more time for uh, the clay shea you can go to avestudio.com and just search for clay shea and um, and order yourself some to try it out it works really great and I imagine I kept it kind of simple with this build here uh, nothing super fancy or complicated but I imagine that you guys out there watching this can do some really creative awesome things with it and play around with it hope this helped and uh, until next time this is Lucas clones bye bye